Okay, thanks for the introduction. Okay. Yeah. Also, thanks for the invitation. Um, uh, I really enjoyed the stay here, uh, except uh, for some stupid reason I need to write, leave right after my talk. Um, so today I want to talk, talk about something quite elementary. Um, I think probably it's well known for some experts, but uh, I feel it, uh, it would be better just to point it out. So let me start. So the title is uh, Sense Theory for Locally Analytic a Representation. Um, I will explain what. Um, so let me try to first explain what is sense theory or classical sense theory, and then I will explain what locally analytic representation means for this talk, and uh, now I will try to explain what what, the, what this really means. Um, so the classical sense theory uh, as follows. So throughout this talk, we fix a. Uh, mm, so yeah, we we have QP and uh, K is a finite extension of QP inside the uh, uh, QP bar. We, we fix an embedding, um, and we denote by GK the absolute Galois group of K. Um, and as usual, we let CP to be the PID completion of QP bar. Um, okay, so this is a setup. But the classical sense theory, you start uh, with a finite dimensional Galois representation. So uh, the V is a, a finite dimensional QP vector space and equipped with a continuous action of GK, a QP linear, of course. Um, and what Sen does is that he um, defines a canonical element in the endomorphism um, of V tensor with CP over QP. Or say it's a, a, a CP linear, so if you choose a basis of V, so let's say the dimension is N, um, it's just an N by N matrix, and it has a property that um, it, well, commutes with the diagonal action of GK. And uh, so uh, this is a, you should call the same operator. Um, and, um, and usually the eigenvalues uh, of the cell operator are up to a sign, uh, to a sign, possibly up to a sign, is called the uh, um, state then ways um, of V. Sometimes uh, people call gen generalized Hodge state ways. Um, it's a generalization of a uh, hot state uh, with um, um, in the special case that um, the so you look at this the tensor product of this tensor with CP because we have an endomorphism so um, by linear algebra we know that there's a generalized eigenspace decomposition let me call this W. Um, okay. Given value of theta V, so this is a generalized uh, eigenspace decomposition. Um, th this generalized uh, classical, uh, so the, the Hodge state decomposition. Um, um, one, uh, one, uh, when set v is semi simple and the uh, hot shape is an uh, integer, so, so if set v is uh, semi simple, 
and the all the eigenvalue um, eigenvalues are inside Z. Um, then this is nothing but Hodge state decomposition. Um, so I send um, data in the last century, probably 60s or 70s. Um, so um, I want to uh, talk about a little bit uh, for the construction. Um, Um, so of course it's due to sin, um, and, but uh, um, the format I'm going to present is essentially due to Bakshi and Comet, um because I will point out uh, what's the difference. Um, so the idea is, um, I guess it's, uh, it's from the starting of the PID hot theory is you have this tower, you have QP bar, you have K, um, you have some intermediate field extension, which is just K infinity, is K, you will join all P's power roots of unity. This is the Galois extension of K, which Galois group I denote by gamma K, and this part the Galois group I denote by HK, normal subgroup. And this gamma K, uh, mm. Why cyclotomic character is naturally isomorphic to um, an open subgroup of uh, of uh, ZP cross. When when K is QP, it's simply uh, it's just a ZP cross. So what you are going to do? So for this HK, we uh, the V tensor ZP. Um, for this HK, we simply take invariance, and uh, there are a lot of invariance uh, by uh, uh, almost eta descent. And now, because I take HK invariance, the action of GK factors through this gamma K. So this is an open subgroup of ZK cross. You can really regard as some kind of piadic lead group. Uh, I mean, uh, it's naturally a piadic lead group. But you can uh, take these locally analytic vectors. Okay, so this notation uh, here. Um, so gamma k locally analytic vectors. So, uh, so basically, it means that uh, so locally, so just a uh, um, so just a, a subspace um, of the HK invariance. And on those, the, the action of gamma k locally around the identity elements is given by a power series. So analytic just means, in this PID world, simply means we're given by a power series. And if you take this gamma k locally and uh, analytic vectors, a priori, the, you don't know there are that many, but it turns out that you have enough so that when you tensor with Cp over k infinity, okay, yeah, I for, uh, uh, it's easy to see that this is naturally a k-infinity uh, vector space. Um, it's naturally isomorphic to V tensor Cp. Okay, so um, this is uh, so what Sen or uh, originally proved is that instead of a locally analytic vectors, but the proof of some gamma k finite vectors, um, but uh, and Bakshi comments, they, they, they pointed out that the, in this case, it's equivalent of this locally analytic vector. So uh, we will use this point of view because uh, uh, in my point, uh, I, I think it's, um, it's the correct uh, notion um, if you want to generalize this picture. Um, so, so now you look at this subspace. Well, because uh, the action of gamma k is locally analytic, one nice thing is that now you can look at the action of the Lie algebra. And because it's an open subgroup of uh, ZP cross the Lie algebra, well, first the thing is that uh, the action of uh, gamma k, the Lie algebra of gamma k, because gamma k acts on k infinity, um, is, uh, 
uh, the action is smooth. So because each element is fixed by an open subgroup of gamma k. So in particular, this action uh, is k infinity linear. And uh, as I mentioned, so it's an open subgroup ZP cross, so it's naturally isomorphic to the, the Lie algebra of ZP cross, which by logarithm is naturally identified with QP. So in particular, I can look at the, the action of one here, which is a K infinity linear uh, action. So in particular, you can extend the, this, the action of this element one um, in a CP linear way and get a CP linear endomorphism here. So extend this action CP linear and we get just the same operator theta V. So essentially, uh, you first define cell operator on this subspace and then you just extend it to CP linear. Okay, so this is a classical picture. Now, I would like to um, sure. um, make raise two questions at least, so, uh, which I, I, I was quite confused uh, when I learned this theorem. And I hope to answer it in this talk. This and uh, also this. Is this okay? Okay. Um, well, first thing is that, uh, well, here we is a finite dimensional vector space. Well, I guess, uh, um, well, one main reason for being uh, studying this is that uh, this etal cohomology, I mean, it gives you naturally some finite dimensional Galois representation. So, it's okay if you're just interested in finite dimensional but representation, but nowadays uh, there, there are a lot of uh, infinite dimensional uh, examples. Um, so you might ask, uh, can, we, um, uh, can we allow more general V um, in this term? Uh, I mean, improve the existence of cell operator. So I, I would say that uh, it, will, it will be clear that uh, you, you cannot just take an arbitrary infinite dimensional representation. I mean, the, um, I mean the, the, this, this procedure won't work. So you need to make some assumption on V. Um, so the, the point, point here is uh, we, we sort of need to find the correct uh, assumption on V. And the second one is that, well, if you just look at this theorem, well, the look at this construction, you start with some uh, finite dimensional representation, which I assume to be continuous. Oh, I didn't write continuous, but GK, the action on V is continuous. But then you claim you have enough locally analytic vectors. So, so where, where do the locally analytic vectors come from? Um, well, in fact, uh, this is, so here, Im implicitly, we, we actually use something. Here, actually, it's a, it's a very hard, uh, sorry, it's a very old result of Cardan saying that, uh, so, the, if you have finite dimensional representation, then the action is locally analytic. Um, well, when I say locally analytic, first they factor through some finite dimensional PID Lie group and the action a priori continues, but uh, locally actually is given by power series. So, uh, so it suggests that, uh, well, in some sense, the locally analytic vectors there are coming from that uh, you, you start with some representation, Galois representation which is locally analytic. So, uh, it would be better if you just to, um, to work with locally analytic Galois representation, I mean, representation of the Galois group. So let me make this definition. Well, of course, the GQP, oh, GK uh, is not a finite dimensional PID Lie group, 
So I can now simply say it's locally given by some power series. Um, it's not too hard to make a reasonable definition here. So G, uh, let's say we have a topological group. Um, so in practice, I would like, I simply just take it to be uh, our Galois group, but at least in the definition, there's no need to restrict it to profinite group. Uh, but I guess in, you can also take a locally for finite group and uh, and let's say W is a QP Banach space um, representation of GK. Okay, so W is a, um, is a QP Banach space equipped with a continuous action of GK. And we say W uh, it's a locally analytic representation um, of GK. So in, instead of just assuming it's continuous, but I want the notion of locally analytic, if the following con uh, uh, the following holds. So by definition, so you have a continuous action of G on W. It means that you have a map from G to all the bounded operators from W to itself. Oh. Yes, sorry, sorry, sorry. Thank you. Um, yes, later it will be GK. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so uh, you look at all the. The bounded operators from W to W, and uh, well, here the space we we have several different topology. We can put different topology on it, and uh, if you only require it to be continuous, actually we put the weak topology on it. So it basically means pointwise convergence. Um, but here I, I would like to require it to be. I want to use the strong topology, or usually some people call norm topology. Um, I mean, just so you, I mean, just so you view as a Banach space, and the norm is simply given by. So you have an element here, an element here. The norm is just given by soup of f x, where x is inside the unit ball, the w, which I denote by w zero. Um. In the so you view this as a Banach space, and you can prove this a Banach space with respect to this norm. Um, but there, there's a, I mean, equivalent definition without just involving norm. Just, um, so I, I, I want this to be continuous. Um, okay, this is a definition, but uh, if you don't. If you really don't like uh, this kind of uh, uh, function, functional analysis, so uh, here is uh, actually uh, an, an equivalent one. The equivalent. Um, so the point is that uh, you, you, you can take the, 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 the diagonal, the identity map, and look at the neighborhood of the identity map and try to pull back the the neighborhood of it, uh, then you will get some open subgroup of G. So from this, uh, actually, you can prove that uh, for any um, integer, an inactive integer n, um, you can find an open subgroup G n inside G. Um, Open subgroup. Um, in such that so first the uh, this the uh, W zero uh, is the uh, well I can even well, assume that um, G N is actually um uh, it's an open subgroup of G n minus one, and the, at the end is um, uh, 
Uh, maybe maybe let me write in two. And the G, GN is a subgroup. Uh, G zero. The chat. Uh, um, first, the uh, uh, W zero is uh, G zero st uh, stable. So you can just uh, restrict uh, to G zero, and uh, and in fact that uh, this is normal. This is a normal subgroup, and such that uh, the action um, such that the GN, the action of the GN, um, so X trivially uh, on W zero mod P to the N W zero. I guess I probably I don't need this. Okay, so another way to say this is that uh, the action of G0 on this W0 mod P to the N0 factors through a finite quotient. Um, so, um, um, this, uh, uh, in reality, is much easier to check, to work with. Um, yeah. So, uh, your topological group, uh, uh, you said the finite quotient, but I think for this you need that the group is like locally for finite or something. Yeah. yeah. This, otherwise, it's not, doesn't follow for me. Yes, you, you are right. Forget about this. Um, thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And W zero is the unit for. Yes. Yes. Um. Okay. I don't know. Um. Yeah. So uh, one remark, probably. Um. Mm, let me just write it here. This remark is that. Uh, well, if G is uh, uh, the finite dimensional piadic Lie group, um, then Schneider title bomb introduced of the notion of locally analytic representation, and you can check that. Uh, uh, well, essentially, come from the what I just erased. Uh, you can check that uh, it's equivalent. So, so, um, uh, agrees, disagrees with um, the definition of neither type of bomb. Okay. Um, so now we can uh, state the main theorem. So. <coughs> Okay, so main theorem is, uh, so K is, as the uh, uh, beginning, a finite extension of uh, QP. And so we have an, um, this uh, locally analytic um, uh, representation of GK. In, in this sense, uh, of course, actually, you can, here I assume uh, W, I mean, the, the Sabana space, but you can also generalize to my LB space, uh, but uh, uh, I don't want to work in, um, in that general setting. So let me just restrict myself uh, here. It's just a, uh, a Sabana space. So in that sense, so it's a local analytic representation in that sense. Um, 
And so what we have is that, so we would like to repeat this construction. So what I forgot to tell you is that actually here is a K infinity, but what can actually prove is that you can replace this by a finite extension of, of K infinity. So, so let me introduce some notation. So QP infinity, K infinity, recall that it's just a K adjoined OP's power roots of unity. And you can consider Km, which is the K adjoined OP's power, P to the nth um, root. Uh, and uh, let me call this part the uh, gamma M. Okay, and let me remind you this is HK. So in particular, gamma N is still an open subgroup of ZP cross. Um, okay, and so for N sufficiently large, uh, you, uh, you also have that equality. Uh, so you take the tensor product, you take HK invariants, uh, but now instead of uh, taking gamma K locally analytic, I fix the radius. So I take gamma N um, analytic vectors. This is gamma N analytic vectors. So just uh, you can identify with gamma N with uh, ZP uh, in some. Uh, Non-canonical way, and the exact is that it's given. The action is given by a power series, and this is a k-n vector space. And you take the periodically completed tensor product with CP. Sorry, th this because v is finite. Uh, it's not finite dimensional anymore. So here uh, we need to work with the completed tensor product, and it's just isomorphic naturally to v completed tensor product with CP. Um. For QP. And so this is first thing. Uh, and so as a corollary, um, you can just repeat the construction I just wrote. So here you have the action of the, the, the Lie algebra. Again, this is just isomorphic to QP by cyclotomic character. And you can look at the action of one. And so again, you can extend this action CP. And this action is Kn linear. You can extend the CP linear, uh, and the and the, the action of Lie algebra is continuous. So you can really extend to the completed tensor product. Uh, so you can, the upshot is that you can really define the operator um, in this case. Um, and uh, uh, which is independent. Um, of n. Uh, here I claim for n sufficient large, this is always true. So, so um, you can, I mean, this, there's some uh, very simple argument to, to show that uh, the, this action um, doesn't depend on the choice of n when you try to define it. So this means that uh, we can define cell operator just uh, for this kind of locally analytic representation. Uh, yes, so if you take the uh, the direct limit over n, you uh, essentially get back this form, except that then the tensor product uh, uh, you need to uh, you need to be a little bit careful. Uh, so I don't want to state in that form. So just in this form. Okay. Uh, other. Uh, so uh, I'll, uh, let me make some several remarks and uh, take questions. Um, so. Mm. Yeah, okay, maybe. You said that Sam considered the, the case of the, showed something stronger involving a finite extension, but you said that he didn't consider locally analytic uh, analytic vector. So what was his formulation of this? In the case of finite dimensional, what was his formulation of this fact? So he, instead of consider uh, locally analytic vectors, he considered locally finite vectors. And uh, actually, comments proved that uh, in this case, uh, they are equivalent. Uh, so, I mean, uh, locally finite vectors are the same with uh, locally analytic vectors. Uh, so he considers vectors which are, in, uh, which are uh, fixed by some open subgroup instead of the... No, no, not fixed. Not fixed. Uh, just the, 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 yeah, the, the image span, I mean, 
but, but span the vector sub vector space QP vector space span by its image is finite dimensional. It might not be fixed by uh, a ah, subgroup. Okay, 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 I understand. So, so, uh, and it, that, it does it have an analog of this thing with getting a K and vector space. Sorry. So the, the thing on the on the left the left board, where you where you have define a K and vector space. Uh, you mean. The finite, I, I guess, uh, in general, you will be, you will, th there are too few such vectors uh, if you just consider finite vectors in general. I mean, you don't, you might not have enough vectors to make sure that you have such an um, isomorphism. So for finite dimensional V, what will sense? Uh, sorry, you're saying, sorry, V is finite dimensional? Yes. Yeah, yeah then it's just, it's just, uh, Gamma n finite, well, it's not gamma n finite, uh, but uh, sorry, I don't quite remember. But uh, you can make some, uh, I mean, still has some way to make sense of this subspace. Okay, okay, okay. Um, uh, oh, let me, sorry, I have several <laughs> remarks. Um, so one remark is that, uh, I mean, the theorem is, uh, uh, was also obtained, um, uh, also obtained um, by um, one, sorry, his name is too long. Let's tap in Rodrigo. Marco. This is a student of uh, some Fiona. So this, uh, he also obtained this theorem, and I guess uh, in his setting, he called the such a relative locally analytic. But uh, the, the main idea is the same. Uh, second, the remark I want to make is that, ah, uh, so it's, uh, but, so because this. Uh, GQP, uh, sorry, GK has some very fine, uh, has some very nice uh, finiteness property. Um, so one nice thing about uh, GK is that you look at its maximal pro P um, quotient. Um, and the, the, uh, this is topologically finitely generated. Um, Topologically uh, finally generated. So this is the essentially <coughs> a corollary of a uh, class field theory. The one nice thing about this is that in order to check uh, this proper uh, this uh, being locally analytic, so you, um, what you can check uh, so v locally analytic is the equivalent of this. Uh, you can find some um, some uh, finite extension of k, uh, let's say gk prime, so open uh, subgroup of uh, gk, such that v not v zero is a gk prime stable, um, and you just need to check this mod p. Um, so <clears throat> That's exactly what I wrote before. So, um, am I right? Um, okay, fine. Endomorphism, but we zero mod PV zero. Um, is finite. I mean, you just need to check P because uh, using this property, I mean, this holds for any finite extension of K. So uh, you can check that once you have this, if you mod the uh, higher power, is, you still have um, the finiteness here. So, so 
in general, you just need to check this. Uh, so, and if you actually read Dr. Comey's paper, so actually this is the, the condition actually they used uh, in their paper. Um, okay, so um, are there any other questions? So uh, uh, instead of uh, giving sketch, uh, sketching a proof right now, so I want to give you several examples. Uh, I mean, why do I really care about this kind of infinite dimensional uh, representation? Um, I will uh, yeah, just give you. You just take an uh, induct limit over n. Sorry, uh, when you take uh, n, uh, take direct limit over n, then you just get uh, all the gamma locally analytic vectors and the, the, the tensor product is over k infinity. I mean, if v is finite dimensional, there is no, complete, no need to take complete tensor product and you just exactly recover this, this isomorphism. Now I'm going to erase this. Examples. First, uh, first example, which learned the, in the paper of Bakshi Comics, uh, is to actually using this, uh, you can give a direct proof of a classical theorem of sin. Um, so what, do, what do I mean by this? Um, so the setup is as follows. So uh, instead of a QP, the, uh, so uh, let, let me just take K to be QP and take a L trick extension, L trick Galois. L trick Galois. And such that the Galois group is a finite dimensional periodic Lie group. Um, and for simplicity, I will just pretend that the G itself uh, is already some kind of appropriate uniform group, but uh, uh, actually I don't need that. So, uh, so what I'm going to take V, so V, um, so I will take to be the analytic, vac uh, the analytic functions on G. So of course, a G if G is not, uh, this kind of appropriate uniform group, I mean, it doesn't quite make sense to talk about analytic vectors. So in general, um, uh, you can just look at, um, first you look at all the continuous functions, and then you look at some G0 analytic inside where G0, then normal subgroup and the appropriate uniform. But anyway, um, just, uh, um, you can, or I know there is some simple trick to um, to make sense of this in general, but uh, you can just pretend that we are just uh, working with analytic vectors on it, and uh, and you can check that. Well, I, I fix an embedding uh, inside QP bar, so I can regard um, this as an action uh, of. Uh, this uh, representation GQP why the left uh, translation action. And, and you can check that uh, this action is locally and it's a uh, locally uh, analytic. Well, and this is almost in some sense, so uh, by definition, if you look at the, mm. I mean, in the sense of uh, Shine the title bomb, but we will also come back to we will come back to this later. Okay, so what does the sense theory give us? Well. So we have an we have an um, we have an operator 
inside the endomorphism of all the um, so G Q P complete tensor product with C P. Well, another way to think about this is that is the C P value analytic functions on G. And uh, moreover, it follows from the constructor uh, that uh, the, the action of cell operator essentially comes from the action of the algebra. So, uh, so there are two things. So first, uh, this is a derivation. Well, because uh, there's a various, I mean, there's a algebra, uh, algebra structure on the analytic space of analytic functions on G. I mean, you have two analytic functions. You can take their product, point-wise product. And I claim, <coughs> essentially because this is some <coughs> comes from the action of the algebra, so it's a derivation. And secondly, is that, probably I forgot to mention, but let me just say this uh, uh, is functorial um, in V. Um, which simply means in this case uh, that it commutes with all the endomorphism of uh, analytic functions on G. Okay, so what are them? Well, at least we know that uh, we also have a right translation action. Blue? Okay, thank you. So the functorial, uh, functorial property just simply means that the commutes is a right translate action. Um, well, so you have a derivation and it commutes with right translation action. So we learn, I mean, basically, that's the definition of Lie algebra. Uh, so this means that you can really regard this as an element inside the Lie algebra. Um, here, so it's such a Lie G tensor with CP. And uh, let me call this element to set L. And in fact, the Sen discovered this, um, the existence of uh, this, uh, this uh, particular element. So I forgot to say that uh, the Sen operator, so it commutes with, uh, with the action, with the Galois action. So it's, you've, in fact, uh, it's in the center here. So GQPX, Y, uh, um, a joint um, representation on the Lie algebra and uh, the usual action on CP. So, so Sen discovered this uh, very special element inside the, the Lie algebra or complexified Lie algebra of a Galois group and they are compatible Y when you, let's say you have a, an extension of L. Um, so, yeah, as I mentioned, I learned this example from the paper of Black Jacobins and they proved this uh, sort of by um, approximating this space of analytic functions using finite dimensional representation. So you can, uh, you can prove that uh, using the result I mentioned, well, some finer result I mentioned previously for finite dimensional representation. But now if you allow this infinite dimensional coefficient, you can just see this uh, quite directly. And the uh, second example, which is some kind of generalization of this, in this example, um, in which case, I don't know uh, in general that you can really end it. I don't think so you can. Um, Approximate to using finite dimensional representation. Uh, so essentially, it's come from a complete cohomology, which is an object uh, I'm very interested in. Um, I'm not going to, to, to recall the definition, but uh, well, what I'm going to tell you is that uh, it has the, this one. So T uh, is some kind of uh, some kind of PID complete. And P torsion free, and we just equipped uh, with, uh, um, with the PID topology. So when, when I say P PID complete, it really means that uh, it's the inverse limit of uh, small p to the n power. Um, and it has the action 
of not only GQP, but a, a continuous action of uh, some G, where G um, um, uh, is some kind of uh, finite dimensional. So just that there. And again, I will pretend that uh, just in this talk is already some pro p uniform, so that I can already talk about the analytic vectors on it. For example, uh, um, well, you can think 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 it's as probably z p or one plus p square. This denotes the space of an n by n matrix is uh, is entries in z p. Um, well, now let V to be P is P inverted. Um, well, and uh, then I claim this that in this case, oh, sorry. Um, th this is my V, yes. But uh, this will not be a locally analytic uh, representation in general. So what I'm going to consider is the G analytic vectors. Um, and I claim that you just take the analytic vectors for, well, sorry, I forgot to make one more assumption, which is that the, this is admissible. Otherwise, this won't make sense. So this is admissible representation um, of G. This definition we will see. Um, so it simply means that, uh, well, mod P to the N is admissible in the usual sense. So you take the G analytic vectors. This has nothing to do with GQP a priori, by, uh, because this admissibility will imply that um, it's a um, locally analytic um, representation um, of GQP. So this means that uh, for completely cohomology, I mean, if you think about G as some kind of GLN and uh, or other PID uh, group, and if you take their analytic vectors, uh, you can automatically define an operator. I mean, and so let me give a quick sketch. So why is that? So you look at the unit ball. Okay, as I mentioned, the. So we need to see that when you mod p, I mean the action of GQP factors through some um, oh, some finite quotient. Well, I cannot really control this at the moment. But what I know, well, well, first uh, before mod p, so so what is the, the so what is the g g analytic vectors? Well, it's the same as g. You take the the analytic vectors on sorry, an analytic functions on G, and you take the unit ball with respect to the analytic, <coughs> with respect to the norm on the analytic functions. And then you take a G invariance, the so GX on the right hand side uh, by the left translation. So in particular, if you, if you mod P, um, well, it's just uh, this guy mod p, so but I can move mod p inside, uh, so it's embedded into the g invariance of mod p inside. So we not mod p tensor this uh, analytic g mod p and g invariance. And uh, I have mentioned that so, so the useful fact is that our analytic functions so. so um, this uh, when you mod p uh, is fixed by some open subgroup. Um, open subgroup. Um, um, let's say g prime of g. But this never holds for continuous function. But if you take uh, analytic functions, uh, this will hold. Right here. I mean, uh, for example, let me just give you a quick example why you should believe this. You just take G to be ZP, and what are the analytic functions? 
and you take the unit ball. Well, it's just power series. Um, uh, and AI converges to zero. So it's clear that Ft plus P mod Ft, all the coefficients are, um, are divisible by P, so it's inside P. I don't know if it's Zp. Okay. So in particular, um, this means that if you mod P, it's fixed by Pzp. Okay. So once you have this, um, then instead of looking at G invariance, I can just look at G prime uh, invariance. So what I get is that so this V uh, G analytic circle mod P, you can embed into the G, G prime and, uh, invariance, but G prime and fix this guy. So it's just the, the G prime fixed vectors of, the, uh, of this guy. So it's just... Uh, Um, tensor. Um, but this is finite. Um, dimensional um, biodimissibility. So this is exactly what admissibility um, means. But the action of GQP, I mean, everything is equivalent with respect to the action of GQP. So the left hand side, the GQP action is here, but the effector is through. On the right hand side, it only acts on the first factor. So in particular, the action of GQP factor through so, um, is action on this finite dimensional FP spaces. So in particular, um, so the action of GQP uh, factor through a finite quotient. Um, okay, so this is one um, particular example that uh, I have in mind, and I have uh, about uh, five minutes, um, so I will just uh, give a very sketch of, uh, of proof. I think the main idea is not that different from from previous work, um, but uh, uh, I just want to maybe highlight how to how to use the definition, uh, I mean, how to use that uh, V is a local linear analytic representation. So, that's uh, Well, first observation. Uh, is that uh, uh, we, uh, we can replace k by a finite extension, or even finite Galois extension. I mean, just by Galois descent. Um, so we have this freedom. So in particular, um, um, so we may assume Um, so GK, well, for, uh, first uh, the unit ball is GK stable, and moreover, GK acts trivially on the unit ball mod P. Yeah, so I don't have enough time, so let me just explain the rough idea. Rough idea is uh, what I call lift um, analytic, well, mod P um, analytic vectors. Well, of course, it doesn't quite make sense, but um, let me explain what, what, roughly what it means. So, recall that, uh, I mean, I forgot to say, well, I should 
<laughs> let me write it here v tensor is cp you take hk and well here i will just try to prove that uh, if you take gamma analytic vectors um uh, you you get this identity So the, the essential point is, to, uh, I mean, the difficulty is try to prove that you have enough uh, an, uh, analytic vectors. So you need to produce a lot of analytic vectors. And how to produce that? Uh, so uh, we will first uh, produce them mod p and then try to show that you can lift them. So of course, uh, to make sense of this, I need to pass to the integral level. So, um, so let me first uh, consider uh, v0. Um, take the completed tensor product of OCP, this is over ZP, and you take HQ, uh, HK invariance, and by almost eta descent, um, this is uh, almost the same as, well, sorry, mod, mod P, you can move the mod P inside. I mean, you can also replace the, this by OK infinity by almost eta descent. Well, the point here is that uh, by our assumption, I mean, the, the action of GQ, GK is trivial. So as a GK representation, uh, the, all, the, uh, all the action is here. So now we want to take the... Um, uh, we want to take its analytic vectors. Well, it doesn't quite make sense. Um, but whatever it should mean, the fixed vector should be analytic vectors. So what roughly we will prove is that there is um, approximately, um, it's actually not equality, I mean, is just v zero mod p tensor with OK mod P. And well, once you have this kind of mod P statement, so you, um, you can show, for example, if you, ten you tensor with OCP, uh, you can rec re recover the right hand side, so you can prove some mod P, um, um, some mod P analog first, and the rest is to, to lift uh, these analytic vectors to. Um, to mod p square, p cube, and this kind of thing. Okay, so this is a rough idea. And uh, so to do this, um, there are two things you need to do. Uh, first is uh, you need to make sense of this kind of. Um, you need to, um, to make sense um, of uh, this kind of mod. P to the n analytic vectors. Well, actually, this and the, the, this kind of the construction already is, uh, appeared. For example, uh, I mean, let me remark that uh, this is uh, closely related. If you are familiar with the subject, the the period ring B sin n, or if you take the limited, then there's no n introduced by comets. Uh, and I think it is. This geometry analog is closely related to, you know, I just talked what he calls CR, this kind of thing. Um, I don't, because I, I don't have time to, to really talk about this definition, but uh, let me just say it's something uh, related to that. Um, and second is to, to show that uh, um, the, the obstruction for lifting, the obstruction, um, um, is zero. Oh, but actually, you, you can't really prove it's zero, but you can really prove that it's, it's queued by some, so whether you can actually prove it's queued by some bonded, uh, uh, for some uniform C that the obstruction is queued by some, um, some power of P. So in reality, in reality, you are not working with mod P, but mod with some, some power of P. And uh, you will, well, you will, in this assumption, you will also change uh, p by some power of p, 
which is, for example, P2C plus 1. And the obstruction is killed by P2C, so you know that up to P2C, mod P2C, you can lift it, because the obstruction is this. So then you can lift to a characteristic 0 and approve this one. Right, I guess I'm already out of time, so let me just stop here. Um, thank you. So thank you very much. So are there any questions? Yeah. Uh, just to make sure that I understand it correctly, so so by uh, in this setting, by local analytic uh, local analytic representation, it actually means it's analytic for some fixed open subgroup. Is that like so? It's it's not a varying open subgroup. Uh, I mean, uh, GK is not a finite dimensional PID Lie group. I mean, you can't really uh, yeah say say if it's PID Lie group. Oh uh, yes, uh, then you recover the yes. Yeah, they recover the notion, I mean, the definition introduced. I mean, it agrees with the definition introduced by Schneider title bomb. It's just uh, analytic respect back to some open subgroup, yes. Okay, okay. But uh, this, I don't know. I feel more robust in this definition. Okay, okay, thanks. Are there more questions? No, then. Yeah. Oh, for? Okay, so uh, I, you, you mentioned that you use certain uh, uh, groups which you call uniform for which you can define analytic functions. So I believe that those should be just given by some power series. So exactly. Can, can, can you, can you, it seems that the topology that you use is not the it's not the it's not coming from the world of continuous functions, but not. it comes from it comes from the power series. Exactly. Right? Yes. Yes. So can you can you recall like from, is it uh, something classical like in Lazard's work? What is exactly the definition of a uniform uh, the group? Uh, I don't quite remember. So actually. Uh, I guess it's something like the commutator is inside the piece power of this group, something like that, and uh, it has no p torsion. And well, I get. And what is the reference? Is it? Um, is I think I learned this notion from some book. Uh, I I forgot, um, but. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I can tell you probably later, but yeah. maybe not now. Sorry. Okay. 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 So thank you very much.